Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Crypto market's still kind of looking a little flat today. Uh, everything uh, seems to be relatively red, albeit not by much. Here's the Bitcoin chart on the daily, guys. And uh, as you can see, uh, we're still kind of just bumbling around in this zone here, not going too much further down than that. Uh, we hit a low point uh, back in uh, late November at about 6,500 for Bitcoin. Now we're trading at about the $7,500 mark. Okay, so right in this zone here, okay, Bitcoin has found some support. The question is, when are we going to see an uptrend? And of course, that's that's the question on everybody's mind. Well, guys, think about it. Last year around this time, uh, we were, what's today, December 9th or so? December 9th, we were around here for Bitcoin. I don't know if you guys can see that on the chart. We were all the way down here after a big sell-off. We were trading at about 3400 per BTC. And 2019 proved to be quite fruitful uh, for Bitcoin in particular, bringing a lot of cryptocurrencies up by June. And guys, this is just... Uh, you know, th this was June, so this was midway through the year. So just to give you guys a rough idea, this was half of the year, this was half of the year. Which trend looks more dominant to you, the upward half or the downward half? Think about it in that regard, and then, uh, you know, set your mind, zoom out, set your focus on the macro trend, and there's where you can see that ultimately we are in a bull market. On the macro level, okay, on the weekly, on the monthly. So yeah, it's going to take a little longer for Bitcoin to uh, breach this 14,000, bringing the rest of the cryptocurrency market up with it. But guys, we still are in a good space. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you can accumulate now while we are in this significant healthy correction, I don't think it's a bad idea. Guys, not financial advice. Please do your own research when you are spending your hard-earned money or rather investing your hard-earned money on something like cryptocurrencies or any other type of investment. I saw this from Matt L-I-N-Y on Twitter. That's at Matthew L-I-N-Y, Korean Security Solutions Specialist SGN Partners with R3. And guys, this is a piece of news from Korea here, but he added this screen grab here. Essentially translated and stating Security Solutions Specialist SGN, it's supposed to be SGN, I think this was translated using a Google Translator type program, has signed a business agreement with R3, an enterprise blockchain company headquartered in New York. York to expand its business into security services using blockchain technology. The two companies will combine R3's open source blockchain platform Corda with SGN system access management, including SecureGuard Family Solutions. SGN is preparing a bridgehead to enter the global blockchain market security field. So blockchain and security, a new vertical that we haven't really heard of, uh, but we know Ripple's partner with R3 and R3 is going to be a biggie in the blockchain and settlement space. So guys, news out of Korea, more news out of Korea. We know uh, in Asia, they are very cryptocurrency forward and blockchain technology friendly. So this doesn't really surprise me. Thank you, Matthew, for sending this. Uh, now I saw this too. Somebody sent me this on Twitter and was asking my thoughts about this. This back from November, but it has to do with JP Morgan and Singapore's central bank and how they're developing a blockchain system for cross-border payments. Dun, dun, dun. Is this going to be the nail in Ripple's coffin? Well, probably Probably not. Uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, so MAS, the country's central bank and investing banking giant JP Morgan. So they had partnered with JP Morgan and they've uh, developed a blockchain prototype for cross-border payments. So essentially this article goes on, uh, talks a little bit about that. Guys, I'll link the article in the description if you want to read further. Some of the takeaway points state that uh, they've been in development since 2016 and that they're using blockchain to explore clearing and settlement for payments and securities. So it all sounds like stuff that uh, Ripple is uh, also getting into, albeit Ripple is doing it on a much larger level here than JP Morgan, simply testing this out with the Singapore Central Bank. Uh, so it goes on to say, by leveraging our key learnings, so this is JP Morgan's statement, by leveraging our key learnings from building the Interbank Information Network and JPM coin, JP Morgan is well positioned to support the development of blockchain-based payments network and operate at scale. Well, they've got a lot of experience with the JPM coin. Of course, I am being very facetious. Now, what central, no, guys, just let's hang on a second here. What central bank is going to put all their country's trust into a private American banking behemoth? JP Morgan's obviously got their interests in mind within this project. Also, I've got to say, JPM coin, and there was this issue with JPM coin in the past, what other bank is going to want to settle with another bank's coin? I think if anything, this is a, this was a test project from back in 2016 uh, for, for the person that asked me about this. And I think a lot of developments have likely occurred since then. 
We got to remember in 2016 when this uh, project initiated, uh, Ripple was still knocking on doors uh, to many government organizations and banking uh, conglomerates trying to, you know, get the message out. You need to use our technology. You need to use our technology. Well, fast forward three, three plus years now, and Ripple has made so much headway. I have a feeling, now don't quote me on this, but I have a feeling they're even partnered with the Central Bank of Singapore, or rather the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and maybe I've got my facts mixed up, but to me, this seems like a little blip. I don't see this as being a big threat. If anything, I think uh, Ripple technology could complement this if they do decide to go ahead with this. Uh, the Singapore authorities do decide to go with JP Morgan. I uh, don't know why they would, but if they did decide they wanted to do that, I think Ripple could complement it because we know Ripple Tech is interoperable. And so the MAS can uh, settle with JPM coin. They can settle with the US dollar. They can settle with whatever they choose to and Ripple technology would be able to handle those transfers regardless. Now I saw this on Twitter from Eric Dadoon, and this is what a lot of people are fearing in the banking sector. Welcome to the Google Bank, your everyday banking from Google, not a bank. Guys, this from LinkedIn, okay? Really, really interesting article here with regards to Google. Google is the latest tech company trying to get a stronger footprint into financial services. The project, codenamed Cash, and the Alphabet subsidiary is expected to launch a checking account sometime next year. Okay, so in 2020, the accounts will be managed by Citibank and a small credit union at Stanford University. So, not running on Ripple, it's said to be managed by Citibank, although we do know that there is a Citibank and Ripple link somewhere down the line. It isn't official that they'll be using Ripple technology, nevertheless, it's the bigger picture here that I want to discuss. You may ask why, let me just go down here. This article also mentions the fact that Apple is also doing something similar with a new uh, type of credit card, which is backed by Goldman Sachs. But let's go down here. You may ask why the hell tech giants like Google is interested in finance? Well, they talk about the possibility of Google wanting to spy on their customers' financial lives, including their income, where they shop, uh, so on and so forth. But realistically, this isn't anything new for Google. They uh, introduced the Google Wallet in 2011, I believe, right? And it was shut down in 2016 and then rolled into what they're now calling Google Pay. But guys, Google, Apple, all these guys are looking to get into the banking game. It only makes sense. Think about it. Millennials grew up with the internet, instant gratification. They want things now, now, now. And who are the companies they go to for all of this? Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, the list goes on and on and on. Big tech Silicon Valley companies. So why wouldn't these companies get into the arena of finance? Well, it only makes sense. And let's not forget this, as millennials are growing older and older, uh, they are accumulating more wealth slowly but surely. And their parents, the next generation up, baby boomers, are also getting older and will likely pass on uh, their inheritance to their children, the millennials. So there is going to be a big shift in wealth. I know we've talked about that on this channel and all that wealth needs to be sitting somewhere. Well, Google, Apple, so on and so forth, they want to get in on the action. And guys, this all just goes back to why it is important for banks to look at Ripple technology as an option to combat these big Silicon Valley behemoths, okay? If you're JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs or whomever, and you're just sitting on your laurels, assuming that you are going to keep your customer base without innovating, boy, are you sadly, sadly mistaken. Okay, you know, we heard about the snowball effect. Well, it is coming. In 2020, Google is now looking to open, opening, uh, or rather looking to open checking accounts for their customers. So Google's getting into banking. I think 2020 will be a big year for Ripple because of this specific kind of thing. It was the same thing with the Facebook coin. When that came out, Brad Garlinghouse went on the record to say he had never had so many calls from banks as when the Facebook Libra scare, we'll call it, was threatening banking revenue. So guys, I'll link this article in the description for those of you who want to read it. And finally, Tony Valentino at Tony Val 764-76318 retweeted this by uh, Demur Sahami. And so let me read Demur's tweet first. IBM Blockchain Worldwire looks very much like ODL. What I believe runs on Ripple. And so you guys remember Worldwire and IBM's partnership with Stellar XLM? Well, uh, here are some screen grabs to that effect, uh, demonstrating uh, currently how the banking system works. Actually, this one's a little clearer. So this is the current banking system, uh, international payment system, and this is what it looks like running on Worldwire, the supposed XLM IBM brainchild. Well, heck, doesn't that look a lot 
like RippleNet. And so Tony Valentino also comments to this effect, ILP connects everyone all working together to bring value to XRP so they can create a global level playing field and retire the US dollar as international reserve. Boy, it's getting deep here, Tony. And you know what, guys? I really don't doubt that to some degree we could have some kind of an agreement or partnership. And let's not forget, IBM is just one company that has stated publicly that they are working with Stellar to do this. But realistically, think of the partnerships Ripple has and think of how um, RippleNet must integrate. This is why they're interoperable, guys. They must integrate with the world to allow the world to run on Ripple. The more gateways Ripple has within their interoperable interface, the better it is for everybody because Worldwire can tap in, the Singapore Monetary Authority can tap in if they want. The point is, is to get everybody on the network to make sure to be future ready for a world that's going to run on blockchain technology. Traditional finance is changing and Ripple's going to be there every step of the way. Anyways, guys, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.